Now, um, when you have a look at some of the questions that you get, uh, they're not going to be nice and neat like this. Sometimes this thing is going to be disastrous. And expanding is just going to, like the sun is going to set and you're going to get hungry and want to eat dinner and you're like, oh, forget this, okay, it's taking too long, okay? So expanding, which is kind of like a prerequisite for comparison of coefficients, is not the only way. So method two. I'm going to give this method a name in a second, but I want you to think about this for a second. We're dealing with quadratic functions, right? Quadratic functions. Now, if I'm telling you, hey, I'd like you to come up with a quadratic function for me, it's not enough information to tell you, here's a point that that quadratic function goes through. Because clearly, there's an infinite number of quadratics that go through that point. Do you agree? And we could draw them very easily. In fact, I'm going to make a mincemeat of this diagram in a second. Here's a quadratic that goes through, and here's another one. And Here's another one, and here's another one, and it just goes on and on and on. Clearly one piece of information, not enough. Agreed? However, even when I go up to, wrong color, even when I go up to two pieces of information, like any two points on the plane, like say here and I don't know, here, there is still clearly an infinite number of quadratics that go through both these points. Can you start to picture them? Look, here's an obvious one. Oops, sorry. Here's an obvious one. Let's try something like that. That one goes through. Use your imagination. Uh, that one goes through. How about this one? That one goes through as well. And then I can make it steeper. Um, I can make it go through like that. Two pieces of information, still not enough. Agreed? But I've got enough space just here. If you provide three pieces of information, and they can be anywhere, here, here, here. Now imagine again, there's only one quadratic that can go through all three of the points, right? And you can sort of start to see it, right? Uh, where's the vertex going to be? Hmm. I think it's going to be a bit higher than that top point up there, just a bit above, because you can see the axis of symmetry where it's going to lie. I'd guess it's something like that. Uh, hold on. I'll fix it. Wait. There we go. Good as new. OK? Now, you can, you can go through this experiment as many times as you like. The reason why you need three pieces of information to get your, to firm down your quadratic is because every quadratic is defined by, count them, one, two, three numbers. Does this make sense? Like ax squared plus bx plus c. Once you know what a, b, and c are, you've got everything about it. There's only a single quadratic that looks like that. Okay? So therefore, method two is called three values. I know it's a bit of an awkward name. But the idea is, if you can find three values where these two things are equal, any three values, I could put these anywhere I like, so you have to be a bit creative and imaginative when you choose these, then you should be able to find what A, B, and C are equal to. Let me show you how this unfolds. I'm going to start back from this line, this line here, okay? because that is the quadratic identity after which this is named. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to start from this line, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose some values that these two things should be equal for, right? They should be. And then I'm going to see what happens there. And I know I need three. I'm just going to choose a convenient bunch, OK? So the first one I'm going to choose is, and I'll let you figure out why I choose this one in a second. I'm going to choose negative 1. x equals negative 1, OK? Why do I choose negative 1? Well, if these two quadratics are really the same quadratic, they're the same curve just looked at from different points of view, then this statement should still be true for a particular value of x. In fact, it should be true for all the values of x, right? So watch what happens when I substitute in, OK? What do you get on the left-hand side? I'm pretty sure you get 2 minus 3 minus 6. Does that look OK? Yeah, I substituted all right. Now apparently that should be equal to, sorry, this is no longer exactly because for certain values of a, b, and c, that should be equal to what happens on the right hand side? What happens to that first term here? It becomes zero. What about this one? And then you just get c, 
You see why I chose negative one now. That wasn't just a coincidence. I did it in order to make it collapse as quickly as I possibly could. So now you can see straight away from here that this is uh, minus one, that's minus six, so c is negative seven, like you already knew, but this is quite a different way to go about it. Do you see? So I've got a value. I've only found one of the primary rules though. I need to find the others. So I need to choose another value of x. This is completely up to me. I really literally can choose anything. I could choose like 423 if I wanted. I could choose pi, negative a million, but I want to choose easy numbers. Would you like to give me a suggestion? Zero. How about zero? If x is equal to zero, on the left hand side it looks like I'm going to get zero plus zero minus six. On the right hand side what will I get? A times one squared, which is A, plus B, because it's B times one, and then C. But I know what C is, I know what C is. So I've got negative six equals A plus B minus seven. Yeah? So I have an equation. I'm gonna give this a name because clearly I don't have enough information on its own, right? And the reason why is because look, this method is called three values, and I've only tried out two, so I need one more. Would someone like to give me a suggestion? I'm going to let x equal. And you just want any, any number that's nice and easy. Okay. Um, I think here it's kind of like a tie between 1 or negative 2. 1 or negative 2. Okay. 1 is nice and easy to evaluate on this side. See that? Negative 2 is a bit easier to evaluate on this side, but it's much of a muchness, okay? Remember, I can pick anything. I'm going to go with 1's just because less negative signs are probably a better idea for me, okay? So when x equals 1, what is the left-hand side? 2 plus 3, take away 6. Yep. Right-hand side? Think, this is a times what now? That's 2 squared, which is 4. So that's going to be 4a. Is that okay? Um, this is 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then there's c, but I, I know what c is, so I'll just write it. Okay, is that right? 2 plus 3 minus 6, that's 5 minus 6, which is negative 1. Negative 1. I'm going to add 7 to both sides, so that gives me this. Wait, did I say negative 1? I said negative 1, right? So I added 7, so that should be a 6, shouldn't it? Is that right? Is that better? Yep. Um, I can simplify that. 2a plus b. That looks pretty good. I think that's ready. What would you like me to do with these? I, <laughs> I'll get the operation eventually. I think subtraction is probably the easiest way to eliminate. You can see when I go uh, 2 minus 1, that should just give me the value of a straight away, right? 2 minus 1 is going to be? A equals 2, which you already knew. You already knew. And if you sub that back into the first equation, uh, this one here, then B is going to be negative 1. Agreed? Okay, now, when you compare the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the board, method 1, which is comparison of coefficients, method 2, which is three values, okay? Um, they're pretty similar amounts of working. Maybe this is a little more. It's a little more. But what you will find is that method two becomes more and more advantageous to you the more disastrous this right hand side looks. Okay? Because even if this thing is a disaster, all you're doing is plugging in values. That doesn't really get much harder. Okay? Whereas this starts, like this process here, all we had to do was expand once, expand twice, and we were there. Okay, but if you've got like fractions over here, if these things are more complicated, this one is going to start to balloon out and then it's easy to make little errors and then you compare the coefficients incorrectly. So you choose based on what the, is appropriate for the question. Does that make sense? Hmm. The third method, which I'm not going to show you but I'm just going to tell you what it is, is to note that, see how you've got x plus 1's instead of x's? Right? So what that means is, this is a quadratic that's been shifted. What direction has it been shifted in? So, you can use that information, that's all you need. That's all you need. All the information you were thinking about with roots and some product and that kind of thing, what Shayan mentioned before, you could, do, you could go through the same exercise and find out what the new quadratic is. But that's a bit outside the scope of the course, so I'm just going to hit pause there.